<laughs> I forgot my coffee. Gonna have to do it the hard way here. I guess so. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the podcast. I'm Rich. And I'm Sandy. And uh, we're coming to you just a little before Christmas in just, this unusual year of 2020. It is the shortest day of the year. Shortest day, longest night, uh, winter sure. solstice for those of us in North in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, and... Uh, there's supposed to be, although it's very cloudy, um, the Christmas star is supposed to be visible. I don't think we got a chance at it. Where we live, you got to look to the southwest. And when I look to the southwest, all I see is trees. Well, right now, the sun sets in just about south. At the trap line. I looked up today. I was, I was writing an article, so I looked up today what exactly, how many minutes there's on the trap line. Today, six hours and 56 minutes is our daylight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think here the um, the sun sets at like four twenty three in the afternoon, and I think it gets up at nine something. Nine twenty oh, at, at the trap line. It was nine twenty is is uh, sunrise and sunset was uh, four sixteen. Oh well, there you go. So it's very close, very close. A little bit north of here, but it, yeah, well, it's not that far. I mean, as uh, as that sort of measurement goes. Yeah, it's, uh, like you say, shortest day, long, longest night, however you want to look at it. It is, uh, we're, we're well into the trapping season. Hey folks, Rich from Trapping Inc. TV here. And we all have our idea of the perfect morning. You know what I'm talking about. For me, the perfect morning starts with the aroma and flavor of freshly brewed Old Smokes coffee. Studies have shown that just the smell of fresh coffee can boost brain activity. No kidding. Well, that's certainly no secret to me. I can barely talk before that first cup. <laughs> Just ask Sandy. I'm a dark roast man, and Old Smoke's Coffee's darkest roast, Stout Maple, is what gets my day in gear. Extra dark, it's strong, aromatic, and smooth. Gets me revved up for whatever that day throws at me. Old Smoke's roasts their coffee over wood fires, the old-fashioned way. Wood roasting takes more time, much longer than modern hot air roasting. Slow roasting over wood takes the bitter out of the bean and imparts a heavenly taste and aroma from the wood smoke. Old Smokes makes a roast perfect for each person. There are five roasts, from light to extra dark, each roasted over a different wood for a unique flavor. Did you know the darker the roast, the lower the caffeine content? It's true. Caffeine is a volatile oil that evaporates with roasting. The lightest roast has the most caffeine, and the darkest roasts have the most flavor. Right now, you can order from their online store and use our promo code RICH, that's R-I-C-H, and get 10% off your entire order. Pretty simple. Just go to www.olesmokescoffee.com, that's O-L-E smokescoffee.com, and use the promo code RICH. That is promo code RICH for 10% off your entire order. And now let's get to today's show. We are. And and it has been an interesting trapping season. It hasn't been, it's been all it kind of all over the place, right? Like we haven't had a lot of snow up until the last short while. So we've done a lot with the Argo, which was, has been really good in, in some ways. And uh, well, I mean, in all ways, it's been good, <laughs> really. But um, you just don't go as fast. I guess that's the only thing about the Argo is that you have to. Just well, I mean, when I run my long line, like, I mean, we we do, uh, what, 100, just about 100K uh, with the Argo, and so that's about 60-some miles. That's, right. a long, that's a long day. It is. And I don't call that the long line. Long line is when, over the course of three days, I, I put on 300 <laughs> kilometers. That's the long line. Well, Richard has uploaded on Locals. Um, uh, a snapshot of what our trap line looks like and how many how many sets he has out there and that's right it's my actually goodness a, he's a busy guy it's a gps uh picture uh software i use for for tracking where where i have my sets and all that it's mm -hmm. really handy uh, especially where we are in the north we have what are called seismic lines which are put yes. in by oil companies and that when they're in the search for gas and oil and these seismic lines are our trails cut through the bush and because on google map i can see them Yes. So I can use both my GPS, uh, the uh, patch map that, that works with my computer, and I can I can coordinate where I'm going in that, and I can lay out a very efficient line. Yes. Okay, and that's and that's what it's showing, what, what I've done, and it shows all my sets. And like you say, there's an immense amount. of. I think I've got, 
I thought I had everything marked, but I realized uh, that I was just sitting today when I was writing an article, and I thought, I forgot that, that second cat pen. Dear me, one. He forgot yeah. one. <laughs> I drove well, by Well, I it. don't know. <laughs> 50 lashes with a wet noodle, maybe. But the the thing about about whether we run the Argo or, or run the snowbill is you uh, come along when we run the Argo and you, you put your foot down and said it was time for the snowbill. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen. <laughs> Part of the charm of the cabin uh, this time of year is that I get to hang out there with the dogs, keep the fires going, go for a few snowshoe jaunts because there's enough snow now, and cook and study and all the things that I do. Uh, out there. I mean, God bless you for being out there because uh, I know that now everybody's as crazy as I am, and mm-hmm. and some days I'm worried about just how crazy you are. So, <laughs> well, but, the jury's out. But right now, uh, uh, I still don't have all of the cat line in, and it's Christmas. Yeah, I know, and it's um, yeah. So anyway, I mean, part of the Argo trip, of course, is that, like I said, it goes a little slower. And so yep. our days are longer. And I think that's what happened when I did the double gainer <laughs> off the Argo earlier. Well, it, was, it was right on the cusp of dark. Well, it was actually, I had to film you laying on the ice with the, in the headlamp. He so, had yeah, it was... to film me <laughs> after I We built fell. a bridge, and you'll, you'll see it this year on the show. We, we had to replace <laughs> a bridge that got washed out. And we did a heck of a job. Oh, yeah. Used the, the Range Road sawmill and sawed wood and, and, and everything, built this beautiful bridge. And I don't know, like we, we had a... We have a mink set right there because it's across this body of water, and this, and this it seldom freezes. This one time it froze, and that was a good deal. But oh yeah, it was a good deal. <laughs> I don't know you. You, I went down to go check. I, I go, still don't know what I was thinking well, because here's here's the deal. I'm kind of parked right on the end of the bridge, and and so I get out and I go around and, and I go down to check this this mink trap that's there, and she tries to stand on the edge of the uh, of the the Argo catwalk and film, but she can't quite see. Then what? Well, then I thought, well. I'm not going to get a good shot from here, so I'm going to have to get down. But I forgot entirely where we were. So I jumped down off the catwalks, and there was just air underneath me until I hit the ice um, and knocked the wind out of myself, and I could hear the water running, but I couldn't move. Um, Yeah, it was... And then... He's on the other side, all concerned, but also concerned that he doesn't want to jump down because if I didn't break the ice, he most certainly would. Oh, I, I couldn't believe that. Was, that was all I could do. I heard, wah, and you were gone. <laughs> I was like, what? Where'd she go? And, and then I realized what had happened, and I, and I thought, oh, my God, she's gone through the ice. Because I, I, I could not imagine you not going through the ice. That was running water just days before. Yeah, it was. Just the week before, it was open. Um, <laughs> so... I banged myself up a little bit. I had a couple bruises, a couple sore bones, but other than other than uh, knocking the wind out of myself and and hurting my pride a little bit, thank goodness that that was all there was, and there was no getting wet. Thank God. Tell you what, you never even got snow on the camera lens. Well, I think that's why I banged up my elbow so bad because I didn't want the camera to hit the. I don't know the things that go through your brain that you're not even aware of. Until you start feeling around for brokenness <laughs> later. Hey, look at this. We finally have our new coffee. Oh, good transition. Just <laughs> cut me right off there. Oh, sorry, were you done? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. But what's new is this. We, we actually have our coffee, finally. We, we, we'd hope for it to happen a while ago, but things being what they were with this 2020 thing. Yeah. Uh, it, well, it, it certainly wasn't Tim's fault. He no. was working on it as much as he could. No. But no. Old Smoke's Coffee has been a, a a very good advertiser with us, and uh, it makes a quality smoked coffee. We like a dark roast better than, yeah. than everything else that he yeah. produces. Lots of people like something in the middle or something on the lighter side. We're we're dark roast kind of people. So anyway, we talked to... This is a dark roast then. Oh, yes. So this is a dark roast. Um, 
So anyway, we we have our own branded coffee now with Old Smokes. Yeah, it's called Wolverine. Yeah. Wolverine, full throttle trapper's fuel. Oh, and it is. Let me tell you. Oh it's what yeah. We start our day without on the trap line without without any word of of any um I don't know. <laughs> well, we got the first we got the first pound of it and I had it out of the cabin and I took a picture of it next to the coffee machine and I says I, I, I headlined it in a few minutes, and then underneath I said, you know, in a few minutes I'll be able to complete full sen- sentences. And she looked at me, you looked at me and says, you know, that's not really even funny. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it isn't. <laughs> Any, anyway, that, that, that is awesome. And you're, It's you're, in the store, yeah, isn't it? We're, we'll have it up in our store very soon. Very we're soon. doing a rebuild on the website. Yes. I've been drug kicking and scheme, screaming into this, and I've realized that, I knew that our website was archaic, but you know, I mean, when we set it up, it was always because every TV show should, every business should have a website. Yes. But you know, not many, many uh, websites are. What's the term? Client facing or are are, you know, um, business to client, you know, direct sales, that kind of stuff. And and now we're we're moving in towards that. So it's going to be. A lot more focus on on everything that's involved. Uh, you know, you'll be able to find all of our digital products. So you're going to be able to uh, uh, hook up with locals, and and you're going to, you know, we're getting an intelligent store. Store. And yeah. then when I say intelligent, I mean that when if you want to order a, a pound of of Old Smokes our, our coffee here, it's going to te- you know ask for your your zip code or your postal address, your your postal code, and it's going to tell you exactly what the what the the uh, the shipping. The will shipping be. is because uh, yeah. right now I I just guess. I mean I'm, I've got a very a very archaic system and <laughs> and uh, so if I put down ten dollars for shipping on a hoodie, well, the the minimum a hoodie costs me to ship is fifteen sixteen bucks. Yeah. And, and sometimes twenty dollars more than that. So I mean this is going to show your actual shipping. It's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. But we should talk about what, how the trapping's been going. Yeah. Well, it's been it's been great for coyotes. It has. Uh, yeah. We we struggled the last couple of years, and and I only ever set up uh, one big coyote bait right on our home quarter, and that's just because I don't want to catch a neighbor's dog. I, I just don't. So so we set it up on the, on the the home quarter, and the last couple of years, it's just been you know damaged animal after damaged animal after damaged animal. Yeah, and damage comes in lots of different ways, right? We have um, there's a a mite. Well, there's the dog louse. Yeah. Ah, yes. And it's from domestic dogs. That's when they get that big, they rub off the, the rough, right? And then, you know, the prime piece of real estate At in the middle of their back. There. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, they, they rub that off, and, and that's from dog louse or shoulder mite, it's called. And uh, we had a terrible run of that. Of course, mange is one of those things that goes through the population as well. We haven't had mange here. Um, but you we have caught coyote in some of our wolf traps up. Uh, at the trap line, yep. and we've had mange. They've had mange. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, which much. is and they're just just what a horrible thing for an animal to get. Oh, terrible, terrible! Mother Nature's no no blue haired granny making cookies. I'll tell you that. That's right. <laughs> but anyway, we've got we've had two, and it's really funny because <laughs> I had I set up my my uh, bait here, and I went to to the uh, a buddy who owns a butcher shop and they're they're of course they're butchering wild game right now and so that's legal for me to use for bait and and that's what i've done and i i have a dump trailer a uh, a southland trailer dump trailer yes and uh, we filled her full we filled her to the, to the brim with with bones and hides and all that and, and he they, had all the birds in the country follow him home <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to drive to the local city, and it's like, oh, there's this cloud of birds. Full. It was like Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. The birds. Yeah. Yep. So I, I went and dumped that, and I did that like in early, I guess about the first week of October, which was probably a week or two weeks before I was going to set anyway. Yeah. I but, just get some used to coming in. Yeah. Right? Used yeah. to getting fed. Put a camera on, a single camera, and I was getting about a dozen coyotes a night on that single camera. And, but there was this one that I would get every night and, and several times a day. And he looked like he'd went underneath a vehicle. Like, I mean, he was just scruffy and matted and his tail come out and kicked sideways. Kink. Yeah, kicked sideways. I was, yeah. I was thinking that he'd broke his tail or something or, or he'd went underneath a, a vehicle. I don't, I, 
Anyway, I laughed. I showed you it, and I said, you know which coyote I'm going to catch first. And he did. <laughs> yeah. It was the very first one. And, oh, my goodness, it just it kind of smelled bad, and it, it looked was, terrible. And It was like an, a, an old man that it was incontinent. You just smelled like pee, and it was Ugh. just it was just awful. But that was, they practically ate up that first dump trailer load. And it got warm on us. Was what, yeah. what happened? Why I didn't set up? It, you know, you 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 got to be freezing at night. So at least we we like it to be around here because my snares kill. And if it's not freezing, then if they lay there with a belly full of meat, the enzymes will keep going, and they can slip in that belly belly area. And I don't want that to happen. So it's got to be freezing at night. Well, it warmed up. The snow we had went. Yeah. It was crazy as could be, and then. Uh, you know, when it, when it finally turned around again, well, I went and got another dump trailer load and, and dumped it out there, and then I started setting snares, and she was pretty busy there. Pretty yeah. busy for a while. I, th I think I've caught all the locals now. Yeah. It's, I haven't... Well, I ha and nature abhors a vacuum, so there'll be more, but, um, yeah. You see lots driving around back and forth to town. Oh, yeah. Oh, I just yeah. ran over one on my way home tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a nice one. Jeez, if I could have stopped him rather than run over him yeah. i didn't thank goodness because yeah. it probably would have <laughs> bent my car anyway it was uh, so the coyotes have been going well um not as many martin as last year no but the, the crazy part was was once again the weather because usually the first check is is eight or nine martins yeah and this year it was two yeah not many <laughs> and and the worst part was was that it was it was so warm. I mean, they they just didn't need this. Is was my opinion. Yeah, I think so too. But the good part about that is that our grandson, who lives close to us, he's five years old. Um, he was telling his mom and dad that he sure would like to come out to the trap line with grandma and grandpa. So we brought him out. Uh, it was just about a month ago now, I guess. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah. And he spent the weekend with us. Thank goodness it wasn't cold. Because sometimes when we, well, like last weekend when we were at the cabin, we get in the cabin, it's minus 15 inside. <laughs> so then it takes a couple of hours of steady pouring the wood to the to the stove to get it above zero. That's hard on a little guy, you know, especially yeah. when he's not used to it. And it's hard enough on, on us, when, and we are used to it. So anyway, it was nice because it wasn't really that cold. And then we rode around in the Argo, and he slept in the back, and we I caught a skunk. I think he's that bad was... luck. <laughs> <laughs> no, because we caught a skunk the next weekend, too. We caught a skunk. That was... And that yeah. was the second or third weekend in November. Yeah. Third, yeah. Third weekend, and we, which is crazy. I mean, there are skunk here. That's not an unusual thing. We just never get to trap any of them because they're all... Uh, in the, they're all hibernating before the season opens. You know, we start setting on the first of November, and and they're all gone by then. But well, they're all denned up. Yeah. But because it had been so nice, they were out. Yeah. And they, this one climbed a tree. Well, yeah. and the, and the one the following weekend climbed the same tree. And so you should see the nails on. It. Yeah. Like I mean, I know skunks have long nails, but this one looks like a mini, a mini Kodiak with the yeah. the, the big the big old. So old that nails was on. unusual. That was a different year for us. And and then it got cold. Well, and it surprised us. So not this this past weekend, but the weekend before, it wasn't supposed to be very cold. I mean, it mi minus twenty. Yeah. Celsius. But geez, we got up Sunday morning. It was minus thirty. Yeah. <laughs> it was like wow. Well, well. Which is about twenty below Fahrenheit. Yeah. Yeah. It's that was not nice. That was that was a little snap, and that was. Yeah. It was funny because the, the the Argo. Of course, we have rubber tracks on the Argo. When you start out in the morning, and it's like really slow rolling at that yeah. temperature. <laughs> well, you want to be careful with all of that machinery too. And normally, when we have, when we know about weather like that, we we just kind of plan accordingly. And often we don't go because it's so hard on equipment and the dogs. I mean, the the our dogs are all are both short hairs, and they just they can't manage it. Um, well, it was funny because they've, uh, you know, they couldn't run. They, they, their feet won't take 30 below. They won't won't run all the way from the cabin out to no. the. They just can't. It, it, they're not they're not made for that. So and I, it's I about a mile run. I opened up the the back of the Argo and I just said to Eli, I says, "Get in," and that's the Weimar Weimaraner. And uh, he looked at me, jumped in like nothing, and 
And uh, Gunner looked at me, and I said, "Well, give it, Gunner." He jumped in too. Like, I mean, well, Eli went in, then Gunner went right after yeah, him. So close it up, and they rode out uh, out in heated comfort. And they, <laughs> they, it was it was so cool because neither one of them ever done that before. No, never they, had to, right? No, it was it was neat. Once the weather turned though and got cold, and all of a sudden, then we were we started catching yeah. Martin and that. But we caught Fisher right from the get go. We did, and we got a big one. Oh. And it's really cool because I, I posted this up on Locals as well on this the, the map, a GPS map of uh, my, my trap line and that. And then I did a close-up of the three, three in a row. There's three sets in a row that all caught Fisher this year. And they're all big. They're all mature. Yeah, males. Uh, male, male Fisher, you know. And every, all, every, all the experts will tell you that you know, they have such a, a certain size of terrain and a certain size of, uh, of home territory. And, the, and they protect it and all that, they, you know. These were all all very mature animals. The one one was fourteen pounds. Yeah, and they and they were all within a mile of of each other. So from the furthest to the yeah furthest to furthest was was less than a mile. Yeah. So, but you know, I mean, biologists are starting to uh, to pay more attention to what's going on in the and the Wolverine study that was done um, by I believe it was from the Alberta Conservation Association did the Wolverine study in yes. conjunction with yep local trappers in in the area and a lot of the things that that um everybody knew about wolverines turned out to be quite the opposite when they when they actually start to study them and and take pictures and yeah it was it's it's a really interesting study so i think the same sort of thing goes on with fisher yeah true we we make a lot of projections Yes, we, we make do. a lot of projections because you know when most most of these animals are nocturnal, nocturnal, right? So right. I mean, the, the projection is that a nocturnal animal is is uh, you know uh, afraid of of humans or or shies away from from uh, from being visible and, and that kind of stuff. And that's just not the way it is, you know. Like I mean, lynx themselves will. If you ever see anything, if you're driving down down the road and you see off in the distance, you see an animal sitting on its butt on the road, I will guarantee it's a cat. Yeah, a coyote or a wolf won't do that. Maybe fox do, but a, a coyote or a wolf won't do that. They're they're constantly on the move. But a, a cat, they don't they don't care. Like I mean, they're they're one of the few animals that development doesn't bother. And wolverine are, we're discovering are, are are pretty similar. Yes, you know they they there was a collared one shot in downtown um, Zama City last year. <laughs> you know. I mean, Zama City isn't very big, but it was downtown Zama City. <laughs> Zama City. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a it's a small community in northern Alberta, but regardless of that, a, a lot of people believed that Wolverine only lived in um, in the mountain ranges. There was there. We discovered that there was a lot more boreal forest, like uh, away from the mountains, than, than they ever believed. Like it was believed that our most of our range here was was uh, all along the eastern slopes of the Rockies. And that's just not true. That's where the least amount of them are. Yeah. Well, and that's why they there was a, a projection that they were endangered, where now that this study has been concluded, it's they're, they're anything but endangered. So, But that just goes to show you, the more you learn, the more you know you don't know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Hey, Rich here. Sandy and I are pleased at the rapid growth of our exclusive community, Trapping Inc. at Locals.com. We created the community to connect more closely with our fans, friends, and supporters without the interference and censorship of social media companies. Because this community is subscriber exclusive, there is no censored photos, shadow banning, and deplatforming as happens on Twitter and Facebook. Trolls are non-existent, as not a one will spend a nickel and put their money where their mouth is to protest on a paid site. You know it. We are steadily moving all Trapping Inc. YouTube videos and podcasts as quickly as time and bandwidth allow. We're tickled and surprised to see how large of library we must move. As well, we are sharing articles on trapping and guns and shooting. Our new TV series, Married to the Hunt, videos are here too. Hours and hours of never before released to the internet hunting and fishing from around the world. Trappinginc.locals.com will be the exclusive home of all Trapping Inc. content from the past and into the future. What else is there to do? Well, there's a forum for everyone to post pictures on and interact. You can message us directly on trappinginc.locals.com. 
as well as interact with all the other subscribers. These are all people with common interests. Get in here. This whole venture is about taking the Trapping Inc. TV community to the next level, building a community of shared interest and interacting with all of our friends. Who knows where we can go from here? Just go to locals.com and sign up for a free account. Then search for Trapping Inc. and subscribe for $5 a month. That's it. Go to locals.com to open a free account and then subscribe for $5 a month to Trapping Inc. Help us spread the truth about a way of life and the responsible, ethical management of the wild resources. Trappinginc.locals.com. Now back to the show. But we had another turn and warm-up happen at just at the 1st of December. Yes. And that's when Otter and, and Lynx opened. And so I couldn't set up the Lynx. Because once again, my snares kill and I can't have them lay in there. Well, we've got lots of bunnies around and that's what they live on. And like you say, you have something that gets caught in a snare and it doesn't freeze. Then it just gets green belly and and that, that, and that ruins, yeah. ruins the whole pelt. So then we were, then we were kind of hooped. And then, um, then the Martin, you caught, f- was it four Martin that you caught the weekend before last? Yep. And they were skin and bones, but that was before we got the snow. And here's an interesting thing about Martin, right? Is that um, they need that snow in order to survive. It's a real insulator for them. And they, and they, even though there's no snow, they maybe can catch more mice and that sort of thing, but they don't have much body fat to begin with. And on, these, on average, 3% or less. Right. So, again, on Locals, there's a picture of those four. Yeah. And they are the skinniest look. I mean, Martin aren't, aren't a, a fat animal anyway. But these guys were, they look like they were starving to death. Usually, I mean, if you watch watch any of, any of my uh, fur put-up stuff with, with Martin, I mean, there's a little bit of fat and meat underneath the two armpits. Yeah. And then down at the girdle in, in the... Uh, uh, the crotch area, you know, there'd be a, a little bit of fat that, that would go around, you know, where where I'd have my love handles. You know, <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that kind of thing uh, is where, where Martin has his fat. But like, these didn't have anything. Yeah. And I think what it is is that, you know, they're using that fat up, that energy up to, to, to stay alive because they have no snow to bury under. And when yeah. you're, you're hitting that minus 20 stuff, they need to be able to get under the snow. Yeah. So, um this past weekend, when we when we were out, we didn't have a martin in a trap anywhere. No, no. Nope. Um, and we had one lynx, and that was from the weekend before, where you'd set up a few lynx pens, yeah. but not not nearly. How many? Normally, how many lynx pens do you set in a in a year? I usually have about one hundred thirty pens out, and I probably have another hundred blind sets. Yeah, and, and there's nothing close to that out there right now. No, there was. I had what eight. And I think I think that you know there was one cat track or whatever, and and I and I caught it, yeah. you know, like I mean, but part of it too is that it had snowed like eight or ten inches. Yeah. And then while we were there, it snowed another three or four inches. Yeah. And so you know you, it's hard to tell if you had any tracks or not at that point, right? Well, and that's the other thing is how many and and then how much do you set up? And this was it's going to be a short um, stretch in here before we return because we're going to be out there for Christmas, but. Um, yeah, so it wasn't it wasn't really worth if we didn't know what the weather was going to be like. If it was going to be windy, then that affects can affect the snares because um, sometimes they you know depending on where they're set and whatnot they they can blow down. Well, or they can get drifted depending yeah, on uh, on the that sets. Too. And that. We should talk about something interesting though about what's going what? on with the with the fur market. Oh yes, some really interesting things going on with the fur market. Um, as I think every every trapper out there knows, the uh, uh, NAFA uh, went into receivership, and a lot of people didn't get paid. Um, and yeah. some some of their fur that was there was handled then by um, fur harvesters. Well, they did the auction for Deloitte, who was yes. the uh, or Deloitte. How, how do you pronounce Deloitte. it? Deloitte. Deloitte. They they were the receiver for for NAFA. Uh, NAFA still exists in some form, shape, or another, but their chapter or their their bankrupt or whatever. whatever they are. Anyway, um, but then something happened with mink. Well, fur harvesters have tried. 
and I feel for these people because they are trying so hard. They tried to have two different um, auctions in in 2020, in the year that never, never is going to. It's end. like a swear word. I don't oh. think it's going to be allowed to be said out loud any longer. Well, anyway, they <laughs> they tried, but if you know, they ended up being online auctions because nobody could come. No, yeah. you know, like the Canadian government didn't allow people across the border, and the stuff that usually. You know, the stuff we're all proud of, you know, those, those, well, those nice, high end, nice pelts. coyotes and, yeah. and Martin and all that didn't sell. No. Not a sniff. Yeah. And yet, and a lot of people don't understand why that is, but if, they had just about 100% clearance on Eastern coyotes. Yeah. Which is usually like, oh, yeah, so what? You know, I mean, but it, because they, they know what they're getting, that there, there's no, nothing. Well, no, it, you, you, got, you think premium. about it yourself. I mean, if you're going to buy a high end car, you're not going to buy it sight unseen you're going to want to sit in it smell the leather yeah you know touch it feel it whatever Ooh, leather you're you're talking Ooh. you're talking out of my price range here yes i am <laughs> 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 however uh, that's why the higher end um the better pelts didn't sell yeah like none of my martin none of my fisher uh the good coyotes didn't sell my, my crap ones uh you know sold I think I averaged like sixty or seventy dollars on uh, on my crap coyotes, and it, and it, yeah, 50, 50, maybe it was fifty fifty dollars. But it, it, regardless, it I was just, not I just a bad sent, price. I just sent them in because I didn't. I wasn't going to throw them away. But but I mean, they they sold and nothing else sold. But since the the last attempt of auction in in August, there's been uh, fur harvest just has been working really hard on on trying to get some some fur sold and, and money in trappers hands yes. and then they're trying to do it before christmas kind of was what they were hoping for so they've been doing a lot of private treaty mm -hmm. suddenly uh mink can get covid <laughs> yeah, believe it or i don't not. know it's probably I, some government conspiracy well and they, they, they've probably they've probably had it for a million years <laughs> you know and now we all of a sudden we're testing everything for covid and I'm, oh look the mink got it but anyway they have killed millions of them in Denmark and in Sweden, and they've they've wiped out they've wiped out the the fur farms. Yeah. Now, the only COVID uh, COVID free mink left are, are from uh, like Seattle, from from the United States. Uh, I forget the fur company down there. Anyway, that's that, and all of a sudden now there's a big demand on the market, and there's pressure. Things like um, like the extra large two um, x three x. Muskrats are selling, like in private treaty, they're selling for good money. Not even yeah. at auction, they're selling for good money. Shearing beaver, if you if you have big winter beaver, like the the double X, triple X, and and beyond, they're going for dollars we haven't seen in years, like yeah. you know forty to sixty dollars for per hide. Yeah. And of course, there's a lot of excitement over over coyotes again. I hear the that the um, local fur buyers though, or or the fur buying companies, the guys who are cash on the barrelhead, are are cutting it pretty hard. Like I know one guy was really upset, and he's from southern Alberta, where he's in the the very center of the of the highest quality coyotes in the world, mm -hmm. and he he did an average sixty seven bucks for. Well, and and he's a he's a good trapper, but yep. he but he puts up quality fur too. I mean, you could yep. you, <laughs> you can sure ruin a, a good pelt if you don't know what you're doing, but he, he certainly knows what he's doing. He does. And so for him to get that, it's, but I mean, once again, I, I think there's a lot being made of, we have more fur buyers than we've had ever. Yeah. I, I can't remember. Like I, I, I could probably name three or four major fur buyers just in the province of Alberta. Mm -hmm. And we, there used to be, everybody sent to an auction, one or the other auction. Yeah. And there was a couple of small fur buyers. Now these are major players that are, yeah. that are buying and advertising everywhere. And, there's a reason they're doing it, people. There's a reason they're doing it. It's not because that that fur's not worth nothing. They just want to have the uh, the car, the train car load f w when the auction comes on. Well, it's uh, it would have been a good year to hold back a bunch. Well, we have some muskrat, I guess. We didn't get as many this year, but no, no, we didn't get as many. We got we got froze out. We... <laughs> it, well, what, what do you say about 2020? After a while, I just get tired of saying that. You know, <laughs> it's, like, it's like okay, we had a bad year. I'm, a, I'm a, I suck as a trapper. <laughs> That's easier to say than, than, than to say 2020 and roll my eyes again. <laughs> People are getting tired of that excuse. I'm tired of it. Let's yeah. no more. Okay. No more this year. 
no more. We've only got like got uh, eight 10 days. days. Eight, yeah. <laughs> 10 <laughs> days. That's it. That's all we got left. 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw a meme on, on there where it was like, you know, midnight on, on uh, New Year's Eve and it turns over and then it was it was month 13th, yeah. 2020 <laughs> instead of 12. <laughs> yeah, we don't know what the month is called. Just, yeah. Anyway, there is perhaps a, a ray of sunshine out there. You know, yeah. it, it, it's nice to see. They're trying to have an auction in March. March. Mm-hmm. And I'm certainly going to send... Uh, I'm just... Uh, Gonna send all of my first or all of my water stuff, like mm-hmm. uh, you know my beaver and, and muskrats and all that, and I'm gonna send uh, my coyotes. Like uh, I have confidence in Mark and the guys that for harvesters will get me the top buck for it. And well, there there is still demand for wild fur out there, but I would also say too that you know some of the questions that have been coming in on locals, as well as on our Facebook pages, are do you ever do anything with your fur? other than sell it to either a fur buyer or an auction house. And we do, actually. Yeah. We've, and, and we're doing more of it this year. Um, so some of you may have seen the last season, uh, season six, where we have um, we had our winter beaver over to Sisson Furs, who are out of Red Deer. Yeah. And they did – we had the beaver um, tanned – and plucked and sheared. Yeah. So they were working with a, a with a quality pelt, but they put a a uh, king size blanket together for our bed. And oh my, that is just one of the most beautiful pieces of art. Um, that is that is one thing that Lyle does so well. <laughs> he is just an he is an artist. He's a craftsman with fur. Well, and you know the and neat- all we did was just give it to him and say make something yeah <laughs> well I, but the, the neat thing is like until this point of the year it, it has been it's way too warm for me right and now I it's sleep. never too warm no for i know not for you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, never never too warm for you uh, and uh but now I'm, I, I'm i'm enjoying it the thing i wasn't prepared for was the weight it's like um, what's really popular now are these weighted blankets, and um, and and we got it just because we like the fur. And then last year for Christmas, um, they made me two pillows, two cushions for the couch, and I cuddle up with those guys all winter long. So you're we're way ahead. Like fur yeah. once again is the original. It's yeah. it's renewable and it's all organic and everything else. But the there it was. Now people are, are, are going out and buying their weighted blankets. We got it with, with with a fur blanket. Yeah, and, you know, a lot of people are paying a lot more attention to it, too. And we held back a lot of our fur with the idea that perhaps we were going to do other things with it. One of the things I'd love to do is is to take some of our fur. I don't know what we would do it with, whether it be lynx or beaver or otter or whatever, but to make a, an heirloom piece for our grand, each one of our grandchildren that comes off of our line. You want a, you want a teddy bear? A teddy bear yeah. for each one of them. And yeah. a lot of people use old fur coats that their grandmother might have had and maybe they're not a fur wearer or maybe maybe the coat just is not in style and they don't want to uh, refurbish it into something that they might wear today. So instead, they take it to Lyle and Carrie Lou and they make beautiful bears. Um Certainly, if anyone is interested, I contact us on Facebook or Locals or wherever it is you find us, and we'll we'll set you up with those guys. But yeah, it's just a a, a quality piece, and what a piece of history for each one of our seven grandchildren yep. to have yep. is a seven. Yeah, <laughs> they don't seven all live here. Times and, how much per bear? <laughs> yeah. You know what though? It is. Um, it is one of those things that they'll never forget, and and. You know, stories to tell, and along with maybe a scrap album or a, an album that maybe Grandma might get done one year. <laughs> well, we do have we have fourteen otter out right now being tanned, mm-hmm. and uh, some lynx too, don't we? Twenty some lynx. What are we gonna do? Should... I don't know. We what well, the other thing that we did um, is we sent a lot of our hides that um, from our trip to Africa yeah. in 2019. Yep. We sent those off as well, and um, so I I was fortunate enough to take a a zebra when we were over there, and I already have a very nice zebra just behind us here mount, and 
and uh, and so I'm going to have a purse made as well as cushions and that sort of thing. And that's the kind of thing that we're going to do more of so that we can use all this beautiful fur and hides that we take I, the meat from when we can. I know one thing I want is I want an otter hat. Ah, yes. I definitely want an otter hat. I have that muskrat hat. Mm -hmm. I ended up winning it some rubber chicken deal we were at. Yes, we. I won it. Yeah. <laughs> And, and it really doesn't fit my head really well. I mean, it's there's nothing better to wear. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's great that way, but Certainly warm. it's pretty sweat, sweated up. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it needs to be professionally cleaned. And, and probably somebody whose head it fits better should, should get it. But I want, and I've, I've got all those beautiful otter, I want yeah. a really nice otter hat. There's so many things you can do with fur, whether whether that becomes a, a product that you use every day or whether it's something that's an heirloom for your family. It's this wonderful. is one of the things, though. And as trappers, we've kind of got fixated on on the dollar end of it, like, you know, that they, it was worth so much money in that. But there was a time when, when trapping was, you it was clothing. Yep. And we, as trappers, we need to be wearing more of our own product. Yeah. Because we talk about, you know, that NAFA didn't do a good job of advertising in North America or or whatever. We should be advertising ourselves every day. Yep. You know, when you can have something like a like a lynx hat or an otter hat or you know, beaver you gauntlets know, or, or there whatever. There are a lot of people who do that, too. And I, I think about Stacey Skirpin. She's a, a friend of ours, a trapper that's yep. over by Lac La Biche area in Alberta. And she does a lot of that with her own fur. She actually tans it herself. She doesn't take it out and, and or send it out. Well, you have a pair of sealskin boots. Yes, I and do. And look at the comments you get on oh, those yes. Every, yes. every time you wear them out the door. Yeah. You know, people people are struck by it and, and, and how, how beautiful they are. <laughs> when I was in, in one of the local stores, somebody came over to me and said, they look real. And I said, <laughs> they are. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not going to swim. <laughs> not anymore. <you> know? <laughs> but, yeah, they're, they're beautiful. They're warm. They're durable. They're, yeah, and they're unique. Absolutely. We need to, we need to do more of that. We need to... Yeah. We need to be proud of what we do, and we need to uh, wear our own products, and we need to show people. Yeah. Uh, you know, with the number of trappers there are, if we all just wear one piece or have one, you know, uh, have a hat or a pair, a pair of gloves or or a, a collar on your jacket or anything. A scarf. A um, scarf. Yeah, Richard may, uh, purchased a, a beautiful. It's raccoon of all things, and yep. it is the most beautiful piece of art, dyed fur. You'd yep. never know that it was raccoon. But it is warm. I wear it all the time. Yeah. And all that, the time. And that's what we need to do. Yeah. We just need to be our, do our own promoting and, and move forward with it because there's, there's getting to be so much more, uh, you know, attention being paid to, to the organic. Positive attention. Yeah. Positive, Positive attention. I, I know. We're, we're airing in, uh, in the U.S. right now on, on Pursuit twice on Saturday and once on Friday or something like that. You have to look on our, our website to, 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 to get the actual times. But... Uh, we're getting a lot of positive feedback, and thank you, folks. Thank you for th taking the time to send send us an email or, or a message or whatever. But it's uh, it's heartwarming to see how po yeah. the, the positive positive messages, you know, and, and that uh, people are taking that time. We, that's not what any, anybody. When we started this, when we started trapping, ink, no way. You don't need that in your life. You know, it's it. You know, it's bad enough having a hunting show. Just wait until until you have, uh, you know, a trapping show out there, right? But, you know, again, probably 80% of our viewers are, uh, they're not trappers, but they may be connected to it in some way or another. Well, yeah, and you know what? I just realized something that we, we haven't even talked about. What? Well, we have, an, we have an, a new TV series. Oh, yes, that's true. <laughs> So in Canada, we air on Wild TV, and uh, we've been the number one show on that channel since we started airing, and we're in our sixth season of airing. We're shooting our seventh right now. Okay, officially, we only know for the last three years. Okay. Because they so, didn't have actual Nielsen rating. Okay, I stand corrected. They, well, so I, now we do. I'm, I'm just, I'm just kind of anal that way where we, we've got to be on the number. Accurate. But in October... We got bumped. We got bumped into second place. Yep, by our own show. Yeah. <laughs> our, our, our hunting series, our new hunting series is called Married to the Hunt. 
And you can find a lot of it on Locals. Like, we got lots and lots of, yeah. uh, of uh, episodes up on Locals. And there's lots of articles there. There's guns. There's trapping. There's, there's all that kind of stuff. We usually post updates from the trap line every weekend. I don't think we posted much this this weekend. No, it was a busy. It was, it was busy. But uh, our very first month of airing was October mm-hmm. on Wild TV. And Married to the Hunt came in number one for uh, outdoor programming in Canada, and um, Trapping Inc. was number two. Yeah. So between the two, we had how many viewers? Over 483,000 viewers in the month of October. That's Canadian viewers or whomever gets the, <laughs> whomever gets Wild TV. So, um, yeah, thank you very much. We are, thank you, yeah. We are very grateful for the people who follow us and, and comment and just tune in. Uh, we have a lot of fun out there. I think that is apparent uh, by by all the fun things that we do and and yeah. And, yeah. and you know what we when we were doing hunting before we were doing it by a, a different format. Yes. And this time when we did hunting we did it just like we do trapping and, yes. and or, or like this podcast and we had some fun. Yeah. I think that radiates. I, I think it does too. I think people just want to see people who are like themselves and we don't take our t- ourselves too seriously. We are far from expert <laughs> on most things. Um, but what we are expert on is is getting out there and having, and fun. having fun and really putting an effort in and, and trying to share everything that we've learned along the way um, with everyone who tunes in to watch, including this podcast. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Should we wrap this up? I think we should. We better. I have packing to do. Yeah, I know. We're, well, we're going out for Christmas. We are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If we don't talk to you in between, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you uh, so much for watching us, um, yes. for tuning in. And, uh, and by all means, check us out on Locals. You'll see a lot of original content there. And, uh, and just some things that you're just not going to see in the television program or even on a podcast. That's so, right. Tra- yeah. Trappinginc.locals.com. And, yeah, we're just going to start a new, a new feature there, too. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be fun. Have to check, in to ch- check, check it out to, to see what we're talking about. Anyway, let's call it an evening. Let's call it an evening. And I'll get this up as quick as I can. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. And maybe we'll see you down the line.